Hey, good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, uh, you know, we have a dilemma sometimes, you know, us guys with home workshops. You can't always find single-phase equipment that you want that's affordable, but you seem to always find three-phase equipment, you know, at auctions especially, that go really, really cheap. If you guys had a way to run three-phase on single-phase power supply that you have at your home and your home shop, uh, you know, everybody would be a lot better off, you know what I mean? A lot of that good three-phase equipment wouldn't get scrapped, wouldn't go straight to the junkyard and everything. Uh, guys would get a bargain and you would be able to outfit your shop with a lot of three-phase machinery kind of like what I've got here you know myself for just a very small amount at, by comparison to buying brand new machinery in single phase however therein lies the dilemma how are you guys gonna run uh, three-phase machinery you don't want single-phase power you know um, three-phase has to have three hot legs you know to operate the the motors the motors have no real starting components or anything like that. It's got a contactor, you know, that comes across line, you know, and, and empowers them. But you don't have the starting components, the centrifugal switches, capacitors, and things like that to make three-phase motors run like the single-phase motors do. And you have instantaneous starting torque because you've got three windings of equal size, and they, they create tremendous torque to get that, uh, that motor or that machine up and running quickly. So there's so many benefits to run that three-phase. So, this is not a do-it-yourself video. This is just a, uh, how I do it video. And I'll show you what I come up with, though I'm not going to provide you a wiring diagram or anything like that. This is really not for you to try to duplicate unless you are very uh, competent and capable, you know, of, of dealing with electricity, with capacitors, with uh, contactors, with relays and control relays and things of that nature, stop-start switches and electric motors and things like that. It's also beneficial if you have access to the uh, to the used material. You know, I've been at HVAC Service Tech, you know, for decades, and tons of stuff that I've actually brought home, <laughs> and tons of stuff, many more tons of stuff, has gone straight into the trash hoppers or dumpsters whenever we're doing tear-outs. So, you know, I always brought home things that had some benefit, you know, for projects in the future. If you look here, I've got a freestanding, uh, two-horsepower, three-phase motor just sitting here just wired in but there's nothing attached to it it's just uh it's just signifying the machine that you want to run off of your uh, your your rotary converter this however is a five horsepower motor 240 volt uh, three phase motor that's going to serve as our rotary converter and this right here is where the mistake that a lot of people make a lot of people don't realize that you need to get the speed of the motor that's going to create the rotary converter all the way up to the rated RPM of that motor before you apply power to the windings through a, an offset leg or a, a shifted leg through a set of capacitors to provide the third leg power off of the single phase power supply. I'll tell you a little more about that in a minute. But I've got a, I forgot what this is, a three quarter horse? No, this is a half horsepower motor. And if you notice, it's got a same size pulley on the, this motor here as there is on this motor here. This is what's called a pony motor. Just like the old bulldozers equipment, you'd have a pony motor to start up and warm up, then you would start the big engine with the pony motor. This is a pony motor. The same RPM motor, 1725, 1725, one to one ratio of the pulleys, so that when this thing gets up to RPM, we can cut the power to the pony motor, just let it coast, and at the same time, close power to this one right here, and it takes off running then at full RPM, full rated RPM. And what that'll do, that'll establish a higher output horsepower-wise. In other words, it'll be a little weaker than what it would be if it had perfectly balanced three-leg power supply coming to it, but it'll be a little bit lower than, than the actual rate of horsepower, simply because that weakened the leg, because we're shifting it, but it's not 120 degrees out of phase like the other two legs are. So now that you have the basic understanding of the concept of how we need to get this up to RPM, then you have to start looking at the thing that how you're going to do that. Now, like I said, I bring home a lot of scrap material. I used to bring home a lot, of, a lot of scrap material, you know, off the job sites. So what you're looking at here is just nothing more than a uh, than a control box. It could have been uh, for any kind of any kind of uh, machinery. Uh, it could have been a fire suppression system. I just don't remember. But anyway, I bring these things home all the time. But everything in here is all used components that came out of different rooftop equipment or different commercial equipment blowers, exhaust fans, whatever, you know, anywhere to get the parts and pieces we need to make it work. But uh, we've got a series of contactors in here, a series of relays, a time delay relay, capacitors over here, 
uh, switches and also a stop start station. So what we want to do is we want to have 240 volt single phase power supply coming in, which we do right through an extension card right here. It comes up to my terminal board. And then off of that terminal board, we take that through a contactor that actually feeds up to a capacitor along with the two high voltage legs that are going to run the rotary converter so that the third leg will receive its power through that capacitor that we're shifting that power up to. So you'll have two legs that are 120 degrees off. The third leg, instead of a full 120 degrees, is going to be somewhat less. It might be, if you're lucky enough, to where you get the capacitor just right. Uh, I'd run 40 and 60 and 80 microfarad capacitors on these, but you may get yourself up to where you're within uh, 105 or 110 uh, degrees off. Whenever you power it up, it's sitting here ready to go, and you'll push your start button, what it'll do, it'll energize a control relay. The control relay then will energize a time delay relay. The time delay relay, what that does is that energizes another contactor over here that actually powers up the pony motor for a specific amount of time. What we did, we, we had to measure and see how long a time it took that pony motor to get that bigger motor up to full RPM. And we set the adjustable timer to that time. It's like 10 or 12 seconds or something like that. And at that point, the timer is going to drop out with the control relay. And at that point, it's going to shut off the pony motor. And at the same time, it's going to send that 240 volt two legs plus the third leg that shifted through the capacitor to give you that offset. It's going to shift all three of those legs to the blue motor, which is the rotary converter. And that all happens really, really quickly. It all happens just seven, eight, nine seconds, something like that. It's not very long at all. So you'll be able to hear the buzzing and the humming. You'll hear a clunk. And whenever you hear the clunk after the relay drops out, that's whenever the motor is up here running and producing electricity. Then what you have to do is after the motor is running and producing electricity, that's when you flip the other switch over here that energizes the load portion. That's what the white motor is here. That's the load. This is the motor that you're actually going to run or a series of these motors that you're actually going to run off the rotary converter. This is going to be the one that's on your lathe or on whatever it is that you got in three phase power supply that you want to operate. Table saw, you know, band saw, massive band saw, drilling, drill press, uh, whatever you want. But essentially, you're going to see the, uh, whenever I flip this, push the start button over here, you're going to see a little LED or a light light up on this relay right here. And it's going to buzz because remember, this is all old equipment and it was old whenever I you know, brought it home 20 years ago or so. But this guy's going to energize the pony motor and at the same time energize the time delay relay. And you'll see that drop out very shortly. So let's start it up. Okay, you heard the clunk and you heard the you heard the buzzing go away. The buzzing went away because it, it took the uh, pilot relay and the time delay relay out of the circuit. And the clunk is what energized the rotary converter right here. So now I am I have three phase power supply back in on another one of the contactors. And whenever I flip this switch here, it's going to close that contactor and make my driven motor or the work motor come online. So you have to watch right here on the shaft really, really quick. I think my belt is chirping over there. So watch right here whenever I turn the switch on. Now if you check your voltage coming into this motor, you're going to see two, full 238 volts uh, on two legs and you're going to see somewhat of a, a lesser voltage on the third leg or across the third leg to the other two uh, simply because like I said that capacitor can't fully create that shift that's required but uh, and at the same time I forgot to tell you the pony motor drops completely out of the circuit so right now the pony motor is sitting there coasting and it's just being run by the belt on the uh, on the rotary converter but the real power is coming out of the rotary converter up here to the contactor and back down to the motor that does the actual work. So if you want to turn off your tool, your machinery, flip this switch off here. This is going to stop right here. What you'll do is you wire this, the power supply off of that contactor that powers this motor. That's got to go to a disconnect that's on the side of your machine. So you start up your rotary converter, close your disconnect, and then you can go ahead and use your machine. 
And so what I did is I just simulated shutting that disconnect off and now my machine is stopped. So now I can just turn down the system and you can see the rotary converters come to a halt right there just like that. Now does that make any sense to y'all? Like I said, this is not for the faint of heart and I'm not telling you to even try it at home, you know. Uh, you gotta you gotta have your wits about you, you know, whenever you mess with something like this. So we can rehash it and do it all over again. Remember, I'm gonna push the stop start button. You're gonna see the the little pilot relay energize the time delay relay. That's gonna pull in the contactor that sends the power over to the pony motor. After the time delay cycles out, it's going to drop out the contactor that goes to the pony motor, and at the same time, it's going to pull in a contactor or send voltage to the rotary converter. And instantly, we're going to create output because we're at full RPM on the rotary converter by use of that pony motor right there. So then we can flip the, the toggle switch, which is like the main disconnect on your work tool, and you're ready to go. So now that you have that sequence, let's push the start button. There's our relay. Pony motor's dropped out. We're generating electricity. It's over here at the other contactor. Turn this switch right here. Watch that shaft. And if there's any doubt about the power that this motor can create, it's very close to the to the full two horsepower output. I know that doesn't simulate very much of a load by just putting a board across that, that bare shaft. If I had it attached to a machine where you could actually see the machine running, you know, and doing some work with the machine, you'd get a much better feel for it. But now, most multi-voltage three-phase motors is going to have a wiring diagram, you know, on the tag or under their uh, their cover or something like that. But just in case they don't, by, by multi-voltage, it's, it's going to say 240 or 460 volt. Now, you don't really want to use 460 volt. You can't use it because you've got um, you've got a single phase 240 volt at your house or your home shop. So And so here's your connection of your wires if you're running 240 volt. Four, five, and six all just wire nut together and curl back up inside. Then you have to tie one and seven together, two and eight together, three and nine together. That gives you three power legs coming in. And then that's going to become your L1, L2, and L3. So that's where your power comes in. Your... 240 volt comes in through here. Your shifted capacitor leg comes in over here. And that also is the power out that actually drives the other motor. If you're on 460 volt, you can see right here, you have just a straight L1, L2, and L3. Three individual wires, nothing attached to it. That's power in. But then you have to connect the windings in series. And by doing that, you wind that four and seven together, five and eight together, six and nine together coil them back up and put them inside the uh, compartment. And then you're wired and ready for 460 volt. Now, if you happen to have some old Lovejoy couplings around your shop, another variation, instead of using your, uh, uh, your, your pulleys and everything and having a belt drive, is you can attach the motor shaft to shaft. Put this motor right over here facing this way and connect the two motors together with a Lovejoy coupling. So that's always an option if you have access to those, those couplings. Just in case you want to see it again from a different angle, this will start. Within 10 seconds, it'll drop out. This will energize. Then we'll be able to turn this on. So there you are, guys. Running three-phase equipment on a single-phase power supply. Hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, you know what? This is Track Command 44, and I'm out of here, guys.